Amen. Thank you, Jerry, and good morning, everybody. So good to see you once again. Our second time back after being away from each other in this way for quite a while. I was just thinking this morning, it doesn't take quite as long to get to the sermon uh, anymore. Um, we streamline things a bit, and we don't have the passing of the offering and children's dismissal and other things. Kind of reminded me of my home church when I grew up. We had an intern there who was training for ministry, and he didn't know the difference between the term invocation and benediction. He, as he thought they were interchangeable. So at the beginning of the service, he said, let's all stand for the benediction. And everybody was thinking, wow, did I sleep that long? I, I missed it. But uh, you didn't miss anything. We're, we're here in the right, right place today. And I recognize most of you after being away for a while. A few of you have your masks on, and I might guess who is that, by the way. Have you had that experience of being in a store or something like that, and you've got your mask on, other people have theirs on, and you think you recognize the person over there? You almost want to wave at them, but you're not sure they'll know. You know, you might recognize them, but they probably wouldn't recognize you. Reminds me of things uh, before this whole thing. Uh, some of us recognize people we think we know from a long time ago. I've had the experience of seeing somebody, and I think, I went to high school with that person. I'm sure of it. And uh, do I go up there and say something to them and so on? And then I realize, no, it's been a long time. It's probably they just look like somebody who looked like that person years ago. And um, even if I recognize them and by some miracle they've been that well preserved, <laughs> they wouldn't recognize me because I don't look the same as, as I did. Neither do you. But uh, thank the Lord we can be together in these days and uh, share the, the service together as we're doing. Well, uh, I wanted to have one more message in the series of messages that I was preaching from uh, the, uh, on the theme of the kingdom of God. We were right up to that point and then we got together last week and I felt Psalm 122 had to be the text for the day. And so that's what we did. And uh, it was really so encouraging just that rush of encouragement to be back together, and we feel it again today. But one more sermon on the theme of the kingdom of God that I had in mind to preach, and we'll deal with it today. So with your Bible in hand, I hope you have your Bible with you, uh, turn to Mark chapter 4, and we're going to deal with the last few verses of the chapter, talking about Jesus' parables of the kingdom, the secret of the kingdom. Just by way of review, if you've been uh, following with us in that series, I've said several times to you that a simple definition of the kingdom of God is it's where God rules and Jesus is king. I hope you can keep that in mind. Wherever God rules and Jesus is king, the, king, the kingdom of God is present there. Jesus taught us to pray, didn't he? What? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What's the next part? Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The, the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of the heavens is where God is ruling even right now. If we could see if the, the veil between this seen realm here that we live in and the unseen realm could be pulled aside for a moment. We could see into that unseen realm like John did in the book of Revelation. We would see God on his throne. We would see Jesus ruling as king. That's, that's the theme. Worthy is the lamb who was slain to receive honor and glory and blessing. So wherever God is in charge, wherever he rules and Jesus is king, that's where the kingdom of God is present. And that will one day be absolutely true when Jesus comes back in glory and power. And the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ and he will reign forever and ever. But right now, in the meantime, where is the kingdom of God on this earth? That's right where you are if you are a believer in Christ. If you have let the Lord Jesus come into your heart and life and he is ruling in your heart, you are kingdom territory. And wherever you go, you take the kingdom of God with you, the expression of God's rule. And the kingdom of God particularly is expressed within his church. This church, Pineland Baptist and many other churches like it, where Jesus is acclaimed as the king. They're, they're the community of God's people. 
They're like a window on the future. It should be that in every church and in every community where, where believers are gathered together, they represent God's rule in their life and God's kingship over their life. And the, the activity of their lives is a representation of what it will be like in the future when all of God's people are gathered together and when the kingdom of this world becomes Christ's kingdom. You know, it, it would be wonderful if that would be happening right now. In God's church, where God is, is ruling, we have all kinds of people of different descriptions. I've often thought, would it be likely that all of us would be gathered together as we are if it weren't for the fact that we belong to the body of Christ? <laughs> what would be the commonalities that would tie us together? What would, what would be the things that you would say, well, I, I want to be together with those people? The main thing that brings us together today is Jesus. And our desire to follow him. And so we come from all different backgrounds. We're from different age groupings. We're of different skin tones. We're of different cultures and backgrounds. And we are one in Christ. That's that's a beautiful thing. And it's a representation of the kind of rule, the kingdom of God that is present, has been present since Jesus came on this earth. And will continue to be present until Jesus comes again. But Jesus said, and we, we were in the early part of Mark chapter 4, he said the kingdom of God is a mystery. There are secrets to the kingdom, and there are some things that you wouldn't know if you didn't know by way of revelation that Jesus told us. The kingdom, Jesus said, comes through the good news, the message of the kingdom. It's like a seed that is planted in the ground, and it it is received by the earth and it then begins to grow and and bring forth a a crop. That's what the kingdom of God is like. And the spirit of God that is active in the word of God is that power behind the kingdom that moves it forward and expands it into the future. So this is what the kingdom of God is about and we can experience right here and now. But today... I want us to look at the passage of Scripture at the end of chapter 4 of the Gospel of Mark and what Jesus said the kingdom is like. So with your Bible in hand, would you follow with me as I read from verse 26 and on to the end of the chapter. This is the word of the Lord. And he said, Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if a man would scatter seed on the ground. He sleeps and rises night and day, and the seed sprouts and grows. He knows not how. The earth produces by itself first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. But when the grain is ripe, at once he puts in the sickle, because the harvest has come. And he said, With what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we use for what it is like? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which, when sown on the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes larger than all the garden plants and puts out large branches so that the birds of the air can make their nests in its shade. And with many such parables, he spoke his word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them without a parable, but privately to his own disciples. He explained everything. This is the word of the Lord. We respond, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God for his word. So this is how the kingdom grows. And it's important for us to see it in this passage of scripture. Because once the seed has been planted, and we saw that in the early part of the chapter, when the seed is planted on good soil, it begins to grow and produce a crop. Then the question is, well, how does it grow? It starts with that seed, that little seed that is so small and seemingly insignificant. And then it begins to grow. But as we see in this passage, the growth is hidden it is not something that you can really watch. You ever try to watch a plant grow <laughs> over a period of time? You know, go out the one morning and see, well, is there anything there? Oh, not, not so much. Well, maybe a little, little hint of it. 
But you, you can't really see it. As, as Jesus said here, it's like that planting the seed that the farmer put in the ground and he, he goes to sleep and he gets up and the plant is growing all that time. But it says how it grows, he doesn't know. It's interesting, isn't it? I don't know if you know this musical, uh, Fiddler on the Roof. That's my favorite musical. Well, I have several favorites. Uh, Les Miserables and some others like that. Phantom of the Opera. But in, in the musical, Fiddler on the Roof, you have this, this farmer, this uh, Jewish man, the milkman actually, called Tevye. And he spouts off with wisdom all different ways. And some, some of it is made up and some of it is actually from the Bible. <laughs> He would say some things that were quite unusual. But at the beginning of, of that musical, when he talks about tradition, you know that tradition, that's the thing that holds everybody together. And he begins to describe some of the, the things about tradition, how the, 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 the men wear their hats and they have their prayer shawls with the little tassels on them. And he said, you may wonder, how did this get started? He says, I will tell you. I don't know. <laughs> that's, uh, that's how Jesus describes this farmer how does that plant grow how does it produce the farmer doesn't really know he can't explain it he just knows that it happens it happens over time he goes to bed he gets up again and that plant is still growing it's like the work of God's spirit the work of God's spirit is a very very subtle, quiet thing in the lives of people. Jesus described it this way in John chapter 3. He says, the wind blows wherever it wants to blow, and, but you can hear the sound of it and you can feel the effects of it, but you don't know where it's coming and what it's going. And Jesus said, that's what it's like with everybody who's born of the Spirit. The Spirit will move unseen in all different ways, Think about your own personal spiritual history. When did you first begin to feel the tug of God's Spirit? When did you first understand that some of the things that people were telling you about the Bible and the gospel were true? You may not be able to know exactly the time when you began to feel, yeah, I think these things, these things are true. I was raised as a young boy hearing the stories of the Bible in Sunday school. Many of you had that same experience. And you may not be able to put, put your finger on the actual day when you said, yeah, I think, I think this is real and, and I really truly believe it. Some of you may have had a more dramatic experience in your conversion where you heard the gospel through someone's witness and it seemed like the Spirit just put you in overdrive and you came right to faith in that moment. Those are the unusual things. Many of us, I think, more commonly have had the experience of beginning to understand over a period of time until we realize that that plant really has produced faith in you and there's something going on that is there. That seed, Jesus said, that is planted in the ground grows in that hidden way day after day in a progressive way. And it says the earth produces, look at it again, the earth produces by itself. It's an interesting word that appears in the Greek there. Many of us don't know the Greek language and you don't have to to understand the Bible. Sometimes it helps. But the word that, that Mark used in that passage is the word automate. <laughs> you recognize it, don't you? It grows automatically because that's what's built into that seed. The seed has the life in it. It has the power in it, the energy in it. And that seed will grow by itself when it is planted in good soil. And that's how Jesus is saying it happens with the growth of the kingdom of God. We don't know exactly how the spirit is moving. It's a mystery. We, we don't know how the earth can produce by itself the plant and that seed. But we know that it has the power to grow. And the word of God planted in a human life has the power to produce something dramatic, something that is more than what you'd ever expect. And how does he describe it when it begins to grow? He says, first the blade, and then the ear, and then the full grain in the ear. 
In other words, it, it's a process. A little, there, a little growth here, and then it begins to go into another stage and another stage. It's sequential. If you're a believer in Jesus, and you have been for years, you might be able to trace the sequence of God's work in your life. When you first came to faith and the things that you felt and knew, and then coming into another phase of life, and then another phase, and maybe now you're like me, you're in your later years in your life, and you say, all of these things have been happening in the course of my years. God has been at work in me, and he's helped me to grow and to move from one stage to another. That's what the kingdom of God is like. It works in our life. The word of God penetrates into our hearts and lives, and then it begins to have its effect. And many times, it's very hidden. And you may not always be aware of what God is doing in your life. You may think sometimes that not much is happening. But I think I've quoted Bob Bennett, the uh, kind of a homespun Southern uh, wisdom speaker. And he says, when it seems like nothing is happening, something is happening. <laughs> when it seems sometimes like Nothing is really going on in your life spiritually, even though there may be things that you can point to that you are aware of, but oftentimes not so much. You can be sure that if the seed of God is planted in your heart, that it is working, maybe in a hidden way, maybe in a way that you're totally unaware of, but it is working in your life. God's work, the work of God's kingdom moves ahead. It, it goes forward, sometimes quietly, but always actively. It is always moving. The kingdom of God is always advancing as the word of the kingdom is planted in human hearts. And you don't always know the effect of it. You don't know when you share a word of witness with someone how God may use that tiny seed to, to bear fruit in the future. You may not know when someone tunes in on the, on the internet or on their radio or some other means and hears something of the gospel message. You don't know how that message is going to penetrate or if it will, but many times it does. And sometimes, as with many people, it takes several times for them to really hear that message before they begin to understand it and desire to hear more of it. But the word of God is moving and it's active. And that's what Jesus said the kingdom is about. Right here and right now, the kingdom of God is here on the earth, and it's moving in ways that we don't understand, but it is moving. It's moving in us, the work of God's kingdom, especially if we have ears to hear, as Jesus said, and hearts that will respond. But look at the second part of what Jesus said about what the kingdom is like. He said in that 30th verse, what can we compare the kingdom of God to? Or what parable can we use? It's like a grain of a mustard seed. When it's sown on the ground, it's the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. I don't think most of us have too much experience with mustard seeds. We put mustard on our hot dogs and our hamburgers, but we don't think about mustard seeds in our culture so much. But I guess we, we have to accept the fact and understand that a mustard seed is a very small seed. As Jesus said here, it is the smallest among the seeds on the earth. It is so small that it seems very insignificant. But what Jesus is saying here is that small seed that seems so tiny and so uh, un, unable to produce anything of any size, when that is planted in the ground and it takes root, it can produce a tree or a bush that is much, much greater than is possibly ex expected. In other words, the work of God that seems so small can produce amazing results. Years ago, I, uh, I read a book, and, and it's one of my favorite books in my library. It's called The Mustard Seed Conspiracy. It's written by a fellow by the name of Tom Sine really impacted my life at the time that I first read it, and I, I brought it out again and thought, you know, this book is as contemporary now as it was back when it was written some years back. Listen to what he said about this mustard seed idea. 
He said this. He said, Jesus led us in on an astounding secret. God has chosen to change the world through the lowly, the unassuming, and the imperceptible. Jesus said, what could we compare the kingdom of God to? It is like a grain of a mustard seed. That's always been God's strategy, he writes. Changing the world through the conspiracy of the insignificant. Isn't that a great phrase? <laughs> the conspiracy of the insignificant. He chose a ragged bunch of Semite slaves to become the insurgents of a new order, referring to Egypt. He sent a vast army to fight with 300 men carrying lamps and blowing horns. <laughs> Seems almost ridiculous, but it worked. He chose an undersized, undersized shepherd boy with a slingshot to lead his chosen people. And who would have ever dreamed that God would choose to work through a baby in a cow stall to turn this world right side up? He quotes from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, where it says, God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. He chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. He chose the lowly things of this world and the despised things and the things that are not to nullify the things that are so that no one may boast before him. That's what he calls the mustard seed conspiracy. That's God's plan. When Jesus came as king, he, he came in a very quiet and unassuming way and, and people didn't recognize him at first and they had to learn through his teaching and his miracles who he was and recognize him as the king. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is among you. And he could say that because as the king, he was there. And he was establishing the kingdom and he preached the word of the kingdom. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. And there were those who believed and followed him and came into his kingdom under his rule and his lordship. And when he gave his life as a sacrifice for sin, as God had, had predetermined that he would do from the ages past. And then when he rose again from the grave, he proved that he was God's Messiah and God's son and that he was the king and God affirmed his kingship. Then he told his disciples in those 40 days after his resurrection, before his ascension, he spoke to them, it says in the first chapter of Acts, about the kingdom of God, that they would carry the message of the kingdom on this earth, that they would proclaim what Jesus proclaimed. The kingdom of God is here. It's available to you. Repent. Believe the good news. And we believe that good news even now, that Jesus is king. Jesus is Lord. That's the good news that we can acclaim. We can tell the gospel message how Jesus came as the Son of God, how he died to pay for the sins of the world, how he rose again to pay for our justification, and how he lives today and rules in the heavenly realm and will one day come again. We can tell everybody that good news and call people into the kingdom. And it's happening all across the world today. It's happening subtly. It's happening quietly, but it's happening. And the kingdom of God is bigger than we think it is. <laughs> Much bigger than we think it is. We're only sitting here on a piece of land here in Ontario in the, in the North American continent, but there are millions of people across the face of this earth who have heard that same message and they have believed that Jesus is God's son and he is Lord. Now we realize that there are a lot of people who don't know that truth and who haven't accepted it. They've never heard it or they've heard it and rejected it. But nevertheless, the kingdom of God is working. It is here. It is now on the face of the earth. And the call of the kingdom that God has given to those who have been invited into the kingdom is to just proclaim that. To proclaim the lordship of Jesus Christ and to live it an example of what the kingdom of God looks like in human life. The end result of God's kingdom is that it's going to ultimately take over the whole earth. Now, that doesn't mean that through your witness and mine, every, everybody's going to be converted. We know that it's going to take the coming of Christ to actually bring the fullness of the kingdom. But while we are here and alive and during this time on earth, 
it is up to us to be able to share that message because God's kingdom is still expanding today and it's bigger than any of us realize. You know, I've often thought as I've watched and you, you see the news reports as I do regularly, you see the spread of this pandemic. I don't think we've any of us experienced that in any of our lifetime. doesn't matter how old we are or how young we are. None of us have had this experience before in this way. Even the Spanish pandemic, which took over the, the world, has been long gone. I don't think any of us know anybody who's old enough to remember that. What we remember is what we're experiencing right now. How do we know what God is doing in the midst of this? Can we understand it? Could we be able to, to fathom it? <laughs> no, we, we don't know what God is doing, but we know he's at work. And he's probably at work in ways that if we really could understand it, it would just blow our minds. We could hardly contain it. God is at work in this. We see this, the social unrest and, and we know that, that people are, are rising up against injustice. And well, they should. Because the kingdom of God is all about justice, isn't it? And righteousness and peace. And when we see injustice in the world, it is the right thing to be able to resist it and to speak against it. Now we realize there's a lot of other things that are going on uh, alongside that. But, but still, we don't know how God is using all of this or will use it in this country and in, in the, this continent of North America and, and all across the earth. God is at work. And his kingdom is at work and it's moving in ways that we perhaps could never have guessed or imagined. There's an old chorus that some people used to sing. God is moving by his spirit, moving in all the earth. Mighty wonders when God moveth, move, O Lord, in me. God is moving and he's moving where you are and where I am in this earth. And as Jesus is saying, that is the nature of the kingdom of God. Many times it's quiet and it is hidden and it is not something we would observe or be able to pick out and say, look what's happening. Can you see it? No, maybe we can't decipher what it is, but we know that it is happening. And when we are a part of God's kingdom and cooperate with God's kingdom, we can be a part of the work of the Spirit of God. The, the wind of God that is blowing over the face of the earth today. We can share by sharing God's good news. So what should we do about it? Well, you can do this. You can let God's kingdom grow in your heart and say, God, I want you to do anything, everything you want to do in me. Help me to grow up through those stages, through the early stages of, of growth and into maturity so that my life produces fruit. Let God's rule take over your home and your family. Let God's rule take over this church and display itself in the world so that it can be seen and experienced through us. Let the good news of God's kingdom be sounded out through the way we live our lives, through how we share the, the opportunities of witness God gives to us. Let that message come through loud and clear. Let's sow the word of God's kingdom and we can watch it grow. We don't make it happen, but we get to be a part of it. And we experience God's kingdom ourselves and we can advance it in others. God is at work, my friends. He's still at work. Let's give him praise today. Father, your word encourages us. I pray that you will encourage your people here to know that you are still working, many times in quiet ways, ways that we would not discern, but you are at work. Thank you for that. Please use us as your people to advance your kingdom. May our very lives, under the lordship of Jesus, speak about Jesus as Lord and as King. And may others see Jesus in us so that they will want to know him and follow him. Oh, Lord, I pray for Pine Island Baptist Church in these days. These are important days in the life of this church. We're at a juncture of leadership, and we need your guidance, and we know that you have a plan. Oh, Lord, 
work that plan out. Let this church be fully kingdom territory in every respect. Let the message and the life of Jesus be, be seen and heard from this place. And Lord, I pray for anyone who is listening to me this morning, either here in this place of worship or listening later on, who has not yet bowed the knee to Jesus and accepted his loving rule. Please let them hear this message today that you love them and that you have provided a way for them to be a part of your kingdom through faith in Jesus. Call them to yourself, I pray, for your glory and your namesake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.